G'day guys, <coughs> Define from Define Mods here. I think today um, I'm going to have a little chat to you about our, uh, bed leveling and the little known or unknown problem that um, plagues a lot of people. You know, and a lot of people give up simply because of this one little problem. Um, and it's it, it absolutely, um, if you're not aware of it or, or if you don't know that it, that it is a thing, uh, you'd probably put it down to bed play in the springs, you know, when you're, when you're trying to do your bed. Um, you'd probably put it down to a bit of, bit of play in the springs of your bed or something. Um, but it certainly, um, it certainly um, ends a lot of people's 3D printing journeys quickly too. And um, I, I've, um, you know, I, if you follow my YouTube channel, you know I've, I've done hundreds of these things now. You know, I don't... I don't post up every one I do but I've literally done hundreds of Ender 3s, Ender 3 V2s, Ender 3 Pros, um, Clones, Vox, um, the Ellie Goos, all of them you know I've, I've done them I've pretty much done them all now and, and um, the ones that seem to be the most susceptible or susceptible to this problem seems to be Creality and I, I run into this problem on all Creality printers I haven't seen it as much on my CR10s, um, if at all. I, I, I honestly, I can't remember uh, 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 working on this problem at all on my CR10, but it, it's just a common occurrence. And, and most of the, the 3D printers I pick up cheap um, are, are, are probably down to this one single problem. Um, because as soon as I get them home, I, I try and um, I try to square them all up. You know, I try to get all my gantry squared, get my upright squared, make sure the distance from here to here is the same as from here to here, top and bottom. So there's no squeeze on the gantry or, or, or opening, or, or as it's going up and down, you get a smooth run up and down. Um, I make sure that these are square and level, so there's no twist. So when you're trying to level your gantry, there's no misreadings, um, and that's all great. That, that's fantastic, um, but none of this is going to help you if you run into this one problem. And the one problem has to do with V pulley wheels, and especially Creality ones. And I don't know. Look, it, you may have found it on, on on other brands, and you may have seen it here. But oh, like I said before, I, I mostly find this to be a a, a, a problem with Creality machines and especially Enders. Jesus, um, you know the amount of um, the amount of Enders I've had to uh, had to replace wheels on. They're all shit wheels. All of these are shit wheels that I've replaced. And I'll show you in a minute. There is a trick to, to getting them to work, but you know I just don't have the time. You know, it's easier for me just to keep buying them by the bag full and keep adding them back in. Uh, which is what I do, you know, the ones that I strip down that I find that are good, uh, second-hand ones, I, I, uh, I put aside. Um, the ones that are shit go in that orange bucket. And you can see I've found a lot of shit ones. Um, and then new ones are, are kept separate again. You know, you start, if you imagine you start mixing these up, mate, you, you'd, be in a real, you'd be in a real mess because... Uh, all right, so down to the actual problem. So what we've got here is we've got a bed. And you've just leveled your bed you've done your paper trick you've done it over and over and you've gone around you've done it you go to do your first print and what it's shit it's like what so you know you're tearing your print back up off the bed or it's not close to the bed or there's a corner out and you're like oh i leveled this i know i leveled this you know it's everything my gantry square this is square everything's done everything's right and i'm still catching the back of the print or the back of the print's not sticking to the bed it's lifting too quick and um so you go through, you level your bed again, uh, you find that, hey, I did miss a spot. Wow, does there is a bit, there, there is a bit of a gap down there. Okay, so you re-go around and print, same thing again. And, uh, you know, this is enough to just drive you nuts. Um, so what it is, what the little culprit is, I'll show you the symptom first, so you understand what we're looking at here, because it's a, it's a good symptom. So here we have a bed that, has all been put together it's all nice it's all level yeah um, th these are nicely tensioned yeah 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 um, everything's good to go um, but then all of a sudden without you noticing here's the problem you can see that you can see a millimeter of play there 
What's a millimetre in layer heights? That's whether you're sticking to the bed or you're not even close to the bed. And what's making that happen? What makes that have that much play? What on earth gives that much play in a bed? Now, if it was to stay like that and you leveled it like that, you'd be happy. But what happens next time you grab your bed in a corner and you pull it forward and accidentally push down, that back corner lifts up. When you push it back, you might actually lift it a bit and push back and that goes down. So you're pulling it forward. So every time you grab your bed to move it back or forth to do your leveling process, you're changing that value. And that's enough to make most people give up. It would make a lot of people just, I've had enough of this, I can't level this machine, it gives me the shits, I can't get a first layer to stick no matter what I do. And it's back up on the, your local trading posts or you know your local Facebook page for half price. You know, you're just over it, move it on. And old me comes in, I swoop in and I, I grab the bargain of the century, come home, fit a couple of doll, couple of new wheels to it, uh, level it up, and she's printing like, you know, like a machine, like it should. Because most people, you know, if you've got a bit of a warp in your bed, um, you can compensate for that sort of stuff. You know, that's, that's not the end of the world. And you're not going to really feel that with a glass bed. If you do, you can do little things. You, you know, if your bed's, if you've got a, an alloy bed and it's a bit low through the middle, uh, a bit of painter's tape through the middle. So then when you clamp it down, that doesn't become a problem because glass won't bend so well it will glass will bow slightly um, but so will your bed um, you, you know you find that it's high in the middle but low on the outsides maybe because you've had to tension it down a bit more you know maybe because you're running stiffer springs nobody thinks about that the stiffer the springs the more tension you've got to put on it to get it level which bows the outer edges of your bed that's a that's a simple equation run painters tape down each side and then you can get it level you only want it to pick up wherever it needs to pick up underneath your glass because your glass will stay relatively flat relatively I say um, to fix that problem but all that's going to be in vain if you're dealing with this and what is this well what this is is with your wheels there's a little lip inside there and this stops the two bearings from crushing each against each other because once the two bearings crush against each other they won't spin so the solution to that is to have a little bead in there that stops the two bearings inside your wheel a little bead that runs on that inner edge that stops these two bearings from touching now what would simply happen now if if you just put the two bearings in there against that wheel and then tighten them up um, you'll just squash that that little that little uh, bead in there and then you're back to square one because you squash the bead, two bearings are jammed up you're pulling against the inner inner bearings, you'll be pulling those that little bit in the middle and your bearings just not going to roll smooth so what they do is, is they pack a little washer in there and that little washer excuse my shitty sits on top of that that bearing sits on top of that washer and that stops them from binding and there's your gap you have a little gap in there and then they, they don't bind when you tighten them down so no matter how much force you put on there you're only forcing the center roller to bind up against the other center allowing the, the, the bearings to freely rotate around the outside on the outer casing simple easy not a problem what I find though is with these Creality wheels is this bearing thickness changes and sometimes it's a little bit thinner um, sometimes it's a little bit too thick so if this bearing uh, this space up was a little bit too thick on these wheels it wouldn't allow the wheels to run hard up against that inner lip well if that's not hard up against that inner lip it allows a bit of play in this wheel to move in that direction now you apply exactly what I'm showing you to this and there's your problem now I can tell you I know what 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 um, what axis this, this one's running on because I don't get the play when I lift here so it's not that it's not that I know it's not those two because I'm not seeing the play if I do that 
I go to this one, I see the play. So I know it's a wheel on this axis. And I can actually, I've had a good look and I know it's this wheel. No, it's this wheel here. So this wheel has a, has a bearing, has a problem. It's got this squish problem. It's one of two things. It's either been over tightened so dramatically bad uh, that it's managed to squash that little lip in there. And the stock bearing, uh, the stock space that was there is fine and dandy and works just perfect. Or the space that was too thick right from the get go. And I'm seeing this on brand new machines. So they're either over tightening these things when they build them at the factories or wherever they build them at the sweatshops or wherever they build these things. And by the time they get to us, we got the end result, which is that. Um, or we're over tightening them when we get them. You know, we, 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 we nip it up too much. Or, or, you know, it's possible. It is possible. It's not impossible, but it is possible. Um, or the bare, these, these spaces are too thick to start with and you never had a chance to start with. Is there a fix for this? Uh, there is. Uh, go and buy some new wheels and hope that none, none of them, which is what I do. So I get my 50, my pack of 50 or whatever it is, go through them all. Well, I don't actually. I, I, as I'm installing them, I'll go through them and oh, another shit one, throw it in the red, the orange bucket over there. Um, but there is, a, there is something you can do. Um, you've got to bear with me just because I didn't prepare this in the ad break. So sorry about this. Guys, uh, I'll use this one, this one will do. Okay, so the fix is, and I have done this, all right, in a pinch, I've done this a few times. Um, you get this bearing, uh, this, this spacer, I should say, sorry about that, this spacer, and you sand it flatter, you thin it out, you make it a thinner spacer. And this is probably this one has already been done you can see the scratch marks if it'll focus see the little scratch marks in it i've done this one and this works perfect i can install this back on the machine and there'll be no play in it uh, provided it goes back with the wheel that it was with to start with remember that because that wheel obviously has a squished inner lip and you want this to match that wheel with the squished inner lip <laughs> could be either of these now but this has been sanded, and how do I do that? The simple way is, is by getting two pieces of sandpaper, attaching them to two blocks of wood. I usually use wider, flatter sections of sandpaper. Sorry guys, I should have had this prepared four years before I started doing this. That's a brain fart. Um, yeah, okay, hang on. We do have another piece, we can grab this one. So what I do is, I put this bearing down, oh this bearing, this spacer down on there, I get the second piece of sandpaper, and I simply just start running it back and forth. The bottom sheet should hold it pretty much in place while you take off the top. And you see, I'm not using any pressure here because we're doing it with one hand, but that simply is how you sand that down and get it flat and even. So if I, can, if I could hold this and put weight down on that, that'd be a really quick process. That usually takes, 15 to 20 seconds to do the job. That's all you gotta do. Once you to have a go at it, pop it back into the bearing, grab it, squeeze it as tight as you can, put the nut, screw, screw the original nut back and, and bolt through it if you want, tighten it up, lock it up, and then while it's locked up on the on the on the on the nut and bolt, see if you can grab that wheel, that rubbery bit, and then move it back and forth. Once that play's gone, you're set to put it back on your machine. Hopefully add your bed on, put your bed back onto it, and eliminate that problem that you're seeing there. That's all i got for today, guys. I hope it helps you. Cheers.